going on everybody? Welcome to the T3 Saturday Q&A. Uh, hope everyone's having a great time uh, this weekend. I just restocked the shop last night, so that took a, a little bit of work, but just in time for Hanukkah, so very, very excited. And just in time to add a little bit of a stocking stuffer uh, above your fireplace or wherever you place your stockings. Wish we had stockings or something like that in, in uh, the Jewish religion, but we don't. Boring. Uh, anyway, how's everybody doing? Richard Parr is here, that fellow there. Certified T3 bot and moderator. Frosty the Snowman. Um, man, we already have 56 people here. Ooh. Nathan says, howdy from West Tennessee. Uh, watch the time says any chance of a shout out for my growing channel pretty please mate well you just got it um watch this guy certified t3 bot says yo yo yo, yo jory yo yo, yo 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 lawson mar says oi oi <laughs> von adventures says tom ford watch for christmas no don't worry guys we don't have any tom ford watches over at the t3 shop thank god uh thumbs for fingers Hi from Canada, Canada, yeah. Um, <laughs> not a shot, not a shot, absolutely zero. Tom Ford watches. Um, man, it's so frustrating because it really is virtue signaling. You know, they want to do, they want you to buy their crappy products under the guise of doing something good for the world. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's um, a little bit frustrating, but you know, whatever. Uh, Daniel Kogan from Scotland. Nello from Italy. Man, my family and I used to go to this really good bistro. Um, well, it was it, it was like, yeah, I think it was actually a Fr like kind of a French bistro in Manhattan called Nello, and it was really really good. But you're Italian, so, but that just reminded me, it was really good. <clears throat> Robert Tiger says, Jory, that was a great review. LMAO. Rashil from India. Very diverse group of people here today. Always. Badr from Saudi. Man, we always have so many very diverse get-togethers every week. And I think that's probably the coolest part of the channel, honestly. Sorry, my beard is going crazy this Saturday morning. Uh, John from Malta. I bet you don't know where that is. Yep. American, never heard of any place. You know, I've been to uh, the corner store and I've been to McDonald's. That's all, that's all I've ever known, apparently. Uh, Tacknit from Chicago. Your beard is going gray. It's not going to, there are a few gray hairs over by like where my sideburns are, but it's not actually going gray. I get some grays here where it's actually more of my like head hair, but my head hair is going gray. So I have a, like a gray patch here once in a while, but it doesn't matter because I'm buzzing my head anyway at this point. So how depressing uh, is the name of this person? Don't worry. He says, what do you think of minute repeaters, are they practical in your opinion? Great question. So the short answer is yes, I think they absolutely are very practical. The long answer is that although they're very practical, um, we have better technology nowadays that function more effectively and for less cost than a minute repeater does. So here's, here's what I will talk about. Minute repeaters, were originally on pocket watches and they were for people who had failing eyesight or were blind. So if you were a gentleman way back when and you could afford a pocket watch, but you didn't have your vision anymore, and this was before the, the time of LASIK and everything, you would use a minute repeater. So you'd press the button on uh, your pocket watch and it would ding and chime for the hours and minutes. Uh, nowadays, like fast forward to 2020, almost into 2021, and you can literally just ask your smartphone what time it is and it will tell you. 
So you don't even need to really see anything to tell the time because things will just tell the time for you. And believe it or not, a smartphone is much less expensive than a minute repeater in 2020. Um, I've heard some people say, like some advanced watchmakers say that excluding a tourbillon, or even, even with a tourbillon, I think, um, the minute repeater complication can be the most expensive complication uh, for a watch to have. Um, Paul Newman Daytona, yeah, the 6263 sold for over 4 million today. Uh, those Phillips auctions, baby. Dimitri says, Happy Hanukkah, guys, to, for everyone. Uh, Sheikh says, Happy Hanukkah. For anyone who celebrates Hanukkah, like myself, Happy Hanukkah to all you beautiful people. And uh, Christmas, right around the corner. S stay tuned for this Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday's episode, last minute, a full of, of, a full list of last minute stocking stuffer ideas for the Watch Geek. Very, very excited. Hanukkah Sameach. Anybody that celebrates Hanukkah, anybody that celebrates Christmas, hope you guys have a blast with whichever your holiday is. It's a really cool Ninja Turtle indeed, Chris. Also, cheers. We have a nice cup of black coffee. Mmm. The Pigs and the Blankets certified T3 bot says, nice collab with Bark and Jack the other day. Yep, great people in that episode. They're all my buddies. Um... Anthony Villanueva says, uh, he's a certified T3 bot as well. He says, your hair can turn gray or go bald. Your beard will still keep you badass. Beard gang, amen. Amen. Uh, not watch related. How do you keep working out with gym closures? Well, I have sandbags of various weights. I have a plate carrier that is very heavy. Uh, I have kettlebells at home. And uh, I've been running two miles a day. So at the beginning, okay, so here, you guys want a little story time? Because this is a live stream. This is a question from L. Jeremiah. If you guys want me to, to go on a little story time with me, then um, I will tell you. When I was, I wasn't com super competitive in like age 20. I was obviously weightlifting, but it was really from 22 on that my like competitive powerlifting really kicked in. But pretty much age 20 to 21, I was running like a 630 mile. Like I was like Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm not kidding. I was obviously way smaller then. Um, but then once I became a competitive powerlifter, I just never ran ever again. Cause I'm like, I'm not running for anything. These colors don't run. And so I just never ran like ever. And so then fast forward to, uh, gosh, when was it end of February or like beginning of March when all the, you know, lockdowns kicked in, um, I, I realized like, oh dang, all the gyms are closing. I did a good job cutting all the, the powerlifting weight before that I got down to like, um, 2.30, like pre-COVID, I was like 2.30 or, or, or maybe even less than that. But I was like, I need to keep training because I've been doing like a really good job now, like, like with my fitness and everything. So I started running and the first mile I ran, uh, like it must've been in March, it was 12 minutes, 50 seconds. It was a 12.50 mile. It was terrible. And I was like huffing and puffing and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, can you guys see me? People are saying, I didn't have a call. I didn't have a call. Can you guys see me? Okay. All right. People are seeing me. All right. Awesome. Guys, if, if it's wonky on your end, refresh your stream. Just refresh your, your stream and it'll like fix it. 
Lee Bishop's here. All right, real quick, let me finish this story real quick. So at the beginning of uh, the lockdowns, I was running and I did like a, a 1250 miles, so almost like 13 minutes. And I was like huffing and puffing and it was terrible. And I was like, man, all right, well, if I can't like lift weights in the gym and I can't be competitive that way, I guess this is how I'm going to like stay competitive. This is gonna be the next thing I'm gonna to work towards. So fast forward to now, December, 2020, and I run two miles in 18. I'm not trying to brag, but every day I run two miles right around 18 minutes. So that's, believe me, I'm not like Usain Bolt, but it's pretty good for me and I'm proud of it. So um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've been really consistent and that's just like, to, so to answer your question, how do I keep training uh, with all like the sporadic closures? I run, I stay consistent, I do a lot of body weight stuff, I wear my plate carrier, which is weighted, I do sandbag work, I do kettlebell work, and it's, you know, it's been working out. Still, still super jacked. I'm nowhere near as, as jacked as I was when I was in like the 240s, but you know, it works out. All right, guys, let's do a, how many people are here, moderators? Wristwash check time, that fellow there, the moderator said. Let's go ahead and do a wristwatch check. We do wristwatch checks every time we hit 100 viewers. So, let's talk about it. What are you guys wearing? I am wearing my Hamilton 9721 LL Bean Dial. Uh, it is a RAF limited edition. And it's got a date complication, which is not common on uh, these Hamilton Field watches. They used to do it a lot more in the old days. Uh, and by the old days, I mean like the 90s. <laughs> but this is the first automatic watch I ever owned. And yes, it is fresh from service. Um, I'm going to be doing a full review on this bad boy very, very soon. And uh, if you want to learn more about this watch in the meantime, go ahead and check out Bark and Jack. Uh, Adrian's channel over at Bark and Jack and I did a little episode with him along with a few other content creators. Teddy was there, Jody was there, um, just really cool people. Jenny uh, was there. So yeah, it's gonna be very, very fun. Watch this guy says my wedding day watch. This will probably not be my wedding day watch. I'm gonna tell you that right now. My wedding day watch will most likely be Either something my, like, like either something Connie gives me or uh, probably my great grandfather's Elgin. I think that will most likely be my wedding day watch. This is a fun watch, but it's, it's really not a dress watch. And I probably wouldn't wear this with a tuxedo or something. So, <laughs> but still. Dean, certified teeth robot, is wearing his badass Zin uh, U1B. Really tough, uh, like really rough and tough um, dive watch. Uh, Bryson, certified teeth robot and moderator, says that he would pick the Reverso. Uh, Anthony Villanueva, certified teeth robot, says my wedding day watch would be <laughs> Casio F91W. Absolutely. Lord Elgin. Certified T3 Ross says, you have two wrists, you have two wedding day watches. Hey, that's a good, that's a good point. But I've been wearing my whoop strap on this wrist. It's been interesting wearing something on this wrist. Uh, and again, guys, this is actually, it's not a smart watch. It doesn't even tell the time. And you can see it doesn't even have a screen. So it literally just gives me like vital information. So there's no, it's, it's not a watch. So don't worry about it. Uh, Captain Time says, uh, Seiko Solar, shout out from New York. New York, the Big Apple. Happy Hanukkah, bro. Thank you so much. Missed hearing the bubbles when I take a drink. Yeah, well, we don't have any post-production on, on these live streams, so it's just me right now. Eventually, I'll become like the H3H3 podcast, and I'll have like Gato running the boards and stuff, and we can be like, bloop, 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 every time I drink. Uh, Sim says, my wedding day watch was a Hoyer WS2113. I know you hate tag, 
Well, I hate Tag, but I, I like Hoyer. I don't like Tag Hoyer. They're, they're different companies. You understand that, right? There's Hoyer, and then there's Tag Hoyer. Very, very different. Um, right. Let me read. Is Lee Bishop still here? I can't believe Lee's here. He hasn't been joining uh, the live streams in like a very long time. Where has he been, dude? It's this dang uh, time difference, dude, from here to Wales. We have any other Welshmen here? Or is it just Lee? That dang Lee Bishop. Uh, Lee's here! Lee, give my love to Penny. <laughs> TFT says it's past his bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Kalustian, certified T3R, says, My wedding day watch was my Seiko Flightmaster. 7T3420 and the marriage and the watch are still ticking. Amen. That's The marriage is probably more important than the watch, if I'm totally honest. What are my thoughts on Ming watches? So, Ming is a very interesting watchmaker. The, their watches aren't something that, like, speak to me as far as something I would wear, but they clearly have a very high attention to detail. And they make some interesting looking watches. Again, not something I personally would wear on my wrist, but um, the, the, I, I trust their watchmaking prowess. Ark73 says, hi from London. Rasheel says, my first watch. Well, my very first watch was, I mean, my dad got me like swatches in the 90s. Uh, I had a Baby G, like a Casio Baby G. Um, but my very first automatic watch was this, was my Hamilton 9721. So, like I'm literally wearing my, my first ever automatic watch. Do I think mechanical watch movement reached its pinnacle with Seiko Spring Drive? I think that's very innovative. I wouldn't say that's the, the pinnacle though, because I don't think that, I think that we can go even further from here. I want to see even more. I mean, you could argue that the gyro tourbillon is also ridiculous. I think personally the spring drive is more impressive than the gyro tourbillon, but I mean, people, it, you know, that could be a huge argument. Um, I'm not going to say it's the pinnacle of, of um, watchmaking, but it's definitely incredibly innovative. Adam Haywood says, Happy Hanukkah. Thank you so much, guys. Happy Hanukkah to all of you. Uh, Bill Rossi is from Humboldt County. That's in NorCal, up north. By the way, guys, speaking of Hanukkah, we have a restock at the Time Teller shop. Moderators, post a link to the Time Teller shop. We have five watches available for this week. Very, very excited, just in time for Hanukkah. My favorite, you can tell, is uh, that Elgin Tropical Diver. Um, Swiss made, automatic, bi-directional rotating bezel. Uh, ridiculous watch. Tritium, it does have tritium. It's beautifully like patinated tritium but it's uh so it's not gonna glow anymore but dude the thing is so sick uh so yeah check out the watches uh my favorite being that elgin we also have another timex lollipop diver um that's the second one i've or the i think it might be the third one i've had at the shop it's the second or third one i've had at the shop very very cool um nate i don't have it here with me um but i'm very excited. Uh, you guys need to check it out. Click the link in the description below and you'll be able to see uh, the better pictures than I could show you here because this is a little iPhone camera. Lord Elgin, that's right. We have a beautiful Elgin, a Swiss made Elgin tropical diver. Um, and then we have a, dude, we have the sickest, we have the sickest Bulova ambassador. Dude, we have a Bulova ambassador with the, uh, Micro rotor movement. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Will all the tritium fade? When it, it, the tritium has already faded. Tritium dies in 12 years. It's tr tritium has a 12.5 year half-life 
and that watch is much older than 12 years. So that tritium has already faded. It's, it's, it's long gone. But that's why you get that custard uh, cream kind of patination. So, yeah, the, tri the tritium's long gone, dude. Mappy says, I got a cat. His name's Bill, and Bill is a freaking brick. Amen. You gotta check out, you guys need to check out that Bulva though. It's only eight millimeters thin and it's automatic. It's an eight millimeter automatic thanks to that micro rotor. Uh, Hector asks how I feel about the eco drive movement. It's great. I mean, it's clearly a very efficient movement uh, because it has um, the ability to be charged from artificial or natural light. And that's great. That's, that's a great thing to have. Uh, Mike Kalusti on Certified T3Watt says, I have to put my watch buying habit on hold till after the new year. That Bulova is sick. Yeah, that Bulova and that Elgin are probably my favorite on the restock. Um, is Grand Seiko getting more attention on the market? I see more and more YouTubers reviewing it. Yeah, they've done, they've separated themselves from Rolex, or from Rolex. They've separated themselves from Seiko and they're going after more of a mainstream Rolex type buyer. That's what they would hope to get. Is it working? We will see. Um, but I think people were slow to realize how good Grand Seiko was because in my estimation and valuation and opinion, Grand Seiko makes better watches than Rolex. So that's just, it is what it is. What do I think about Squale? Uh, Squale is overrated. I'm not really interested. They don't do anything better than Seiko does. Is Orient the new Seiko? Yes, I literally made an episode typing Orient is the new Seiko. I literally made that episode. I literally made an episode with the title Orient is the new Seiko. Moderators, please link that episode. Renzo says, damn, really tempted to buy that Timex Lollipop. Uh, you should, because it's crazy. It has a beautifully uh, stylized um, uh, date window. The cutout for the date window is ridiculous. It has a dark date wheel, has a bi-directional rotating uh, bezel, um, original bracelet, uh, mechanical movement, so it's not quartz. It is hand-wind, and it's from the 1970s, so... You know, you can either get one of the reissues today of these vintage Timexes, or you can get an actual vintage Timex. Daniel Lee says, but wait, what's the new Orient? Orient. Orient is literally the new Seiko and the current Orient. <laughs> Joe Robertson, yes, Doc. Uh, Dr. Joe... They are. They've been moving up. They're trying to delineate between their different uh, product lines. They want people to know that when you get a Prospects, you are getting um, literally the best sports watch Seiko can offer. And that's why they're going to start charging you over $5,000 for them. Uh, people ask me my opinion on Yema. I literally made an episode last week about Yema. Uh, watch that episode. I'm going to help my moderators by trying to link some episodes as well as they come up. You guys need to watch more of my content, guys. You're asking me questions about episodes I literally made like a week ago. What's my opinion on Zeppelin watches? I made an episode about that last month. You guys got to stick with it, guys. Here's, here's my Yema episode. So... That's my Yema episode. I just linked it to you guys. You can watch uh, Yema. And then I'm going to try to link you uh, my episode on Zeppelin. Lee Bishop has seen all the episodes. If you need to ask someone about uh, any of my episodes, you need to ask Lee Bishop. Because he's he is my uh, biggest fan. Uh, he's the only thing he loves more than the time teller channel is star Wars. So I'm honored. <clears throat> oh, right. Bryson, the moderator does have the Zeppelin episode and Adam, 
My moderators are quick on the draw today. Heck yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause for my moderators. We can't do it without them. Milcom's been busy uh, throughout COVID. Um, so he has been having to, like our schedules because of how life has changed. Um, he has had to step away for a little bit, but he's still around. Don't worry. Lord Elgin with the super chat says, Jory, what's your opinion on Tom Ford watches? <laughs> oh my God. If only someone made an episode about it. Um, thank you, Lord Elgin. Yeah. Tom Ford is a joke in my opinion. Super Lord chat. <laughs> Adam the moderator says, um, Tom Ford is a joke. I just can't really take them seriously. They're literally selling garbage for a thousand dollars. I'm not a fan. Dan Wazi, certified T3 bot, is here and the author of perhaps one of the best graphic novels. You gotta join the, the channel to read to read that though. Michael Webster, I didn't tune in today to be scolded. Grow up. He says, just kidding. <laughs> um, that man needs to go to print. Insane. Yeah, dude, we need to do a table read of that whole graphic novel noir story. It's incredible. Yeah. David Binder or Binder, I think it's Binder, with the super chat, says, no, I'm your biggest fan. NVM, Star, <laughs> Star Troopers is number one. Um, Starship Troopers, that movie was, I, dude, in the early 2000s, I saw that movie so many times, uh, but watching it as an adult, you, re, you pick up all the things you didn't understand when you were younger. May contain bleach with the super chat. So thanks, Jory. I'm obsessed with field watches now after watching some of your past content. Anything you, you, you would recommend at a higher price point? Well, I mean, at a higher price point, I, I, I would recommend the Rolex Explorer, a 1016. Not the 40 millimeter explorers, okay? The 36 millimeter explorers. Those are the watches you should buy. IWC Spitfire, Adam, that's a really badass watch. Technically, it's a pilot's watch. The name is the Spitfire, but, um, and the Spitfire was a famous plane in World War II, uh, and IWC is, is known for making pilot's watches, but it's, I guess, I mean, I mean, there's such a definite crossover between field watches and, uh, pilot's watches that I'll allow it. IWC Spitfire is a badass watch. Uh, 14 270 is another option for the 36 millimeter, but my opinion, the 1016 is like the king when it comes to 36 millimeter field watches from Rolex, at least. Uh, am I a fan of chess? I've gone through phases with chess. Right now, I don't play as much, but if you spoke to me like a couple years ago, I would tell you, yeah, that I'm a fan of chess. Why are you, are you gonna ask about the Queen's Gambit? Hmm. One of the most prolific openers in all of chess. Not as popular nowadays though. New watches versus vintage watches. Under $500. There's a lot more, there's a lot more modern watches I would buy at the under $500 price point than vintage watches. Vintage watches under $500 can be, you you might not be getting the best watches. That's what I'll say. Matt B with Super Chat says, no. It's, okay, says, I'm not your biggest fan. I'm your biggest simp. Simp season. Enzo Molly says, Mito. Yeah, I sell, I've sold like four or five maybe even six Mito watches at the Time Teller Shop. Big fan of Mito. They're super underrated. Um, they are, uh, the, the as far as modern watches goes, um, the Mito Baroncelli Heritage 3, I believe, is my favorite textured cream dial, kind of blued hands, cursive stylized font on the dial. Mm, gorgeous. 
Watch this guy with the super chest. Happy Hanukkah. Here's your latkes fun. Thank you so much. Gonna make potato latkes uh, with Connie. And we're gonna celebrate. My parents are in Oklahoma with my two sisters and my niece and my brother-in-law, of course. And they're having a little celebration uh, there. I got family in, in Okie Finoki in Oklahoma City. And uh, I'm holding down Los Angeles. So cheers. Cheers to my family in Oklahoma. Cheers to Oklahoma, guys. Cheers to Texas's hat. So Connie and I are going to be here uh, making latkes for ourselves. Latkes and applesauce, believe it or not. Can you say that Mito again? Um, the Mito Baroncelli Heritage 3. Yeah, Oklahoma's really nice. Well, I love Oklahoma. Uh, they might be getting six inches of snow in Oklahoma, which is ridiculous. Because, it, like, two days ago, it was, like, 75. So it's, like, it, it, Oklahoma has the most ridiculous, like, weather dips, and it, it's just crazy. Super dude says, hey, T3, what's going on, brother? Lord Elgin with the super chat says Jory uh, has the only wristwatch themes only fan. Shh. You got to join the channel for $4.99 a month to get my secret content. Shh. I put what? <laughs> oh my God. I put, I, I don't know how long I was going to say that I was going to put a bet how long only fans was going to be around before it gets like shut down. I think OnlyFans will last another three months before some before enough things happen that it gets shut down. Um, but we can't talk about it probably because it's, it's we're gonna get like this channel gonna get shut down if I talk about that stuff. Um, John Bonani says, I'm your biggest fan from Charleston, South Carolina. Well, guys, I just want to be clear. I don't have fans. I don't, like, I might joke, like, when we're talking about only fans or something. Um, I don't consider any of you guys my fans. I'm not, I'm not, like, a celebrity, okay? You guys are my friends. You guys are my viewers if you watch my stuff. But you guys are friends, all right? You guys aren't my fans. It's, like, that seems so like self-involved and like pretentious we're a cult okay like matt b said we're a cult let's get it straight you guys aren't my fans we're cult members and we've all had some of the kool-aid we have a new channel member boo, boo, boo. air horns air horns get the air horns in the chat right now david binder certified T3 bot, thank you so much. We film every freaking day here in this office. Gato is editing like a madman. We have people working around the clock trying to get the shop ready, trying to get the lighting done, trying to get products to review, sending out emails. We can't do any of this stuff. This little tiny operation that is the Time Teller channel. Um, we can't do any of this without our channel members. So guys, you know, $4.99 every month. I'm not trying to beg here, in, like an e-beggar, but it seems like a, a small sum of money, but it you'd be surprised. I have a bunch of supporters that voluntarily want to keep this channel going, and I don't think you realize how much that $4.99 helps. Like voluntarily to support the channel with that amount of money it it really does help so you might not think that it goes a long way that's literally how i keep gato doing his stuff that's how i keep the shop doing its stuff we, we the website costs money guys running a business costs money the running the channel costs money thank you like thank you thank you thank you so mr binder certified t3 bot Thank you guys. Um, that's an amazing Hanukkah gift from you. Um, let me see. Dean with the super chat says, Jen is requesting a gun show. This money is from her. 
All right, baby girl. Get the traps popping. I'm a madman. I'm still Jack, guys. I lost like 80 pounds after I stopped powerlifting competitively and uh, I'm, but don't worry guys, I'm still jacked. Probably not as strong as I uh, used to be. But you know, it is what it is. Super Dead says, ooh, damn. <laughs> Lord Elgin, certified teeth thrust says, I opted for the T3 tote bag with my donation. Um, Larry Land 22 says, prefer the urban gentry. <laughs> and that fellow there, the moderator says, it's okay, Larry, you're still welcome here. And that's awesome, dude. I don't need to be your favorite watch reviewer. That's, I don't care if you hate me. You're still welcome to hang out here, take what you will from the channel. If you learn something, if you enjoy yourself, that's fine. You can come back whenever you want. It's cool. Urban Gentry makes amazing content. Go ahead and tell him we say hi and we send him our love as well. God bless. Have an amazing holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Tis the season, guys. Enjoy yourself. God bless. Uh, <laughs> Dean Certified Teacher Bot says, uh, Jen says, best $5 ever. <laughs> Lee Bishop says, does Connie know you're flexing to a bunch of dudes? Um, yeah, Connie, how, how the heck d does she have the life she has? It's because every week I flex on a bunch of dudes. The only reason Connie lives this life, this amazing life in Los Angeles where we're not even allowed to open our front door, where we're stuck inside. And if we even go to get our mail and we're not bundled up to our face, we get arrested. Amazing. It's an amazing life here, guys. And it's all because I flex on dudes on the internet every week. Um... The new and improved Svelte Jory. <laughs> Life of Sam says, watching from Cancun. What? Why are you watching me from Cancun, dude? Go party, man. Uh, that fellow there, certified teeth robot and moderator, says, Jory, my wife says that Connie should decorate your beard with ornaments. <laughs> you know they have those things. They have, like, beard ornaments. LA still locked down. Chill. Yes. And there was like a whole new set of restrictions. I don't want to talk about it because I, like YouTube is very strict about. So at the beginning of uh, the whole COVID thing, if you use the word COVID or quarantine or coronavirus, your channel got flagged and you would get demonetized. Uh, and like, I don't want to risk it because nowadays YouTube's putting in like a whole bunch of uh, restrictions. So it, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, Thomas, certified teeth robot, we don't get into gossip here. You're a channel member. If you want to talk about that stuff, you can happily talk about it on the Discord chat, but we don't really bring it into the channel because we don't need to gossip. This isn't a place where people, we're, we're not little girls, okay? We, we're men, we have fun, we talk about the good things, we don't need to talk about other, like, we don't need to talk about another dude's livelihood. Darren says, tell Connie to say hi. Connie is not here right now. <laughs> um, she'll probably come into the office. Actually, I don't know when. It's it's noon. She'll come in at some point, I'm sure. Mike Kalusci on Certified Teeth Robot says, we don't hate here. We just love the watch life. Amen. Amen, brother. Matt B says, we ain't yentas. And for those of you who don't know, a yenta in Yiddish is like, a name for like the women who just gossip all the time. They just want to talk about, oh, did you hear? Did you hear about uh, Moisha? Moisha's son didn't get into medical school. We don't know why. Oh, he seemed like such a good boy, but he, I guess he's going to have to settle for law school. It's like people like that. that just gossip all day long. Justin says, hey, Jory. Uh, what do you think of Baltic? Um, so here's the issue. Baltic uh, has wrote, written to me, excuse me. And they, they were like, hey, do you want to 
um, review one of our watches? And I was like, yeah. And then they just they didn't, didn't reply. <laughs> That's happened with a few different companies. So I think that uh, potentially when they realize that I am going to be like impartial and I'm going to really like ca call it as it is, depending on the watch they send me. Um, they, yeah, I think that scares some companies. I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened with Baltic, but I've had companies, some pretty popular companies, micro brands ask if, if I can review their watch. I say, yeah. And then when I go over everything with them, they're like, whoa. And then they back off because they, they probably don't want to get laid into with a impartial review. That being said, I'm blessed to say every Monday we have a new micro brand asking to be reviewed. So a lot of these companies really do stand by their products and they have guts and that's awesome. Renzo says, you think a quartz tank Bascalante is worth the money or save up for the manual wind? Either or, uh, I think they're both great. I mean, the tank is a dress watch, right? It's not complicated, it has a very cool uh, can, uh, mechanism where you can flip it in on itself. It's kind of like a bit of a, a reverso, but reversing on a different plane. Um, I sold, I've, I had a quartz version at my shop. Uh, so yeah, I think it is worth the price depending on the price, right? Like the quartz version shouldn't be sold at the same price point as the manual wind version. So as long as uh, it is the right price, yeah, then it is worth it. But I don't know what price you're referring to, so. Anthony Villanueva, Certified Teeth Robot says, Microbrand Monday is my favorite watch series on YouTube. Yeah, dude, thank you so much for enjoying it. Thanks for everyone supporting uh, that series. I didn't realize that it was going to be as successful as it was, but uh, it was, a, I kind of just did it because I, it sounded good. Microbrand Monday had good alliteration and I figured that it was a fun way to talk about watch companies that I've never heard of. And then it just kind of took off. So thank you guys for, um, for checking out that, that weekly series. And, and it, it makes me feel good. And I think it's doing a good thing for the watch world as a whole, because we're, we're learning about companies that aren't the regulars, Rolex, Omega, Seiko. We're talking about things that are myself included have never heard of. So that's, that's where I think the real value is. D Dorson says, saw you on Bark and Jack. Good stuff. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me, man. Adrian over at Bark and Jack. He, he's a good friend. He makes incredible content. He has such interesting things to say about watches. We all have our own opinions. Uh, I think I'm probably a bit more opinionated than him. I think he's probably a much nicer dude, <laughs> but um, he has a great collection. He knows a ton about watches and he's a great guy. And I'm very honored that he asked me to um, collaborate with him in that episode. So thanks for hanging out. And if any other people are joining in from the Bark and Jack channel, welcome. We love you and we love Bark and Jack. Um, Mike Colucci on Certified Teeth Robot says, we T3 bots share a lot about our personal micro brand watches on the Discord. Come join us. That's true, guys. If you want to get some insight about um, how... If you want to get some insight, not only from me, but from my like inner circle, join the Discord chat, guys, because a lot of these dudes, uh, if you see them with the green text uh, and the little icon that looks like an 8-bit version of me, those are my certified T3 boss. Those are my channel members, and they also, you know, they have their own opinions. It's a very diverse group. You join the Discord chat and... Um, yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. So you can get all their input about various watches as opposed to just, just mine. Mikola says, what's up? Came for, uh, came for a minute to hit the like button. We'll have to watch the stream uh, tomorrow. Well, I'm going to talk to the tomorrow version of you. Mikola, the tomorrow version of you, or I guess when you're watching this, the today version of you. How are you doing? And welcome to the pre-recorded live stream. Reading comments, reading comments. Elise is apparently he likes coffee. That's very true. He likes coffee and talking about watches. 
Matt B says, Jory, when are you and Connie popping over for a JoJo marathon? <laughs> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. If you get a watch from a third party, would you review it? It depends on the watch. I, I typically try to review things that I'm personally interested in. Um, it, it definitely depends on the watch. Do a review of HMT watches. Get them to send one to me, bro. But I, I have, a, they're from India, right? A lot of people that have asked me about HMT have, have said that they're from India. I don't know anything about them because there's not a big market in the US. John says, pre-recorded? Uh, yeah, because Mikola said he's going to be watching this tomorrow. So tomorrow, this is, when he watches this tomorrow, it will have been pre-recorded. Because we're recording it right now, John. Because we're live now. So if you watch this at any other time, but now, it will have been pre-recorded. I like that he says pre record. I like that he says pre recorded, but he's commenting on it so he knows it's not pre recorded. Uh, let's read some comments. Steve Harding, certified teacher by Hydro, just got back from Project David Beckham. We hit 200 for a moment. Can we get a wristwatch check? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? What are you guys wearing? Every time we hit 100, we are going to. Uh, this is my LL Bean Dial 9721 RAF Limited Edition Hamilton Field Watch. Lord Elgin, this isn't live, dude. This isn't live, Lord Elgin. Don't worry. Um, Linus said, uh, I just got the Wittenauer Art Deco Gold Filled Tank from the Black Friday sale. It was the last watch for sale. I'm so lucky that I got it in time. Uh, it's still in transit and I can't wait to wear it. I'm very excited for you to get it because that thing is freaking sick. Um, I think I sent it to Germany. I think I sent, right? Are you in Germany? I remember sending it one overseas and I think it went to Germany. Whatever, I sent it to you wherever you are. But if I remember, I think it's in Germany. Um, but very excited for you to get it. Um, and guys, there's five watches available at the T3 shop. Very, very, very Excited because uh, got him in just in time for Hanukkah. You know what? I might do something for you guys. Who's interested in a little bit of a Hanukkah promotion? Hmm? Let me know. What if I were to give you a little bit of a Hanukkah present myself today? From now until the end of Hanukkah, use that code. Don't tell anybody. Use that code and it will get you a discount on those watches available. Use that code. I just typed it in in the comment section. I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm not even going to vocalize it. I just typed in a code right now. And if you use that code from now until the end of Hanukkah, you will get a discount at the shop. Sneaky. Try it, guys. Let's see if anyone picks something up by the end of this live stream. Uh, Roar of the Tiger. Why not? Germany. Rammstein. Fire. Fly. Guys, remember Rammstein? Oh, my God. Captain Time says, how do you join the channel? So, there should be a join button next to the subscribe button on all of my episodes. And if you click that, it's, it's a, it is YouTube's Patreon, essentially. And it's $4.99 a month. And we do some extra content over there. And you get access to the members-only Discord chat. I think you have to do it from, like, your computer, though. I don't think you can join from the YouTube app. I think you have to do it from, like, the browser. Ewan says, the kindness of this man. Do. Do host. Do host me. Oh man, so funny. Adrian from Barkin Jack is here. Says that 1970s manual wind on your shop is fire. Love it. Adrian, thank you so much. Uh, that's the second one I think 
I've been able to uh, find for the, the store. So I sold one like three months ago, I think. And um, yeah, crazy that I was able to come into another one. This one's actually in, in even better condition than the last one. Uh, Thomas says only five watches. Hmm. Yeah, Thomas, I think you might, I know you're one of the newer members, Thomas, so I don't know if you're a newer viewer, but we do on average five watches every week. So there's always five watches. There was five watches last week, and then Black Friday there was 13 watches, and then this week there's five watches, and guess what? Next week there will probably be five watches. Isn't it weird how consistency works? Uh, that fellow there, Certified T3Bot, says, when joining the Discord server, uh, okay, 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 okay. So, for all of the new, um, members, for all the new channel members, um, if you want the access to the Discord chat, pay attention to the Communities tab. So, uh, when you go to my homepage, um, the YouTube homepage for the Time Teller channel. You click the Communities tab, and every week I refresh a secret link that only the channel members can see. And that's how you um, join the chat. But guys, um, everyone, let's give a round of applause for, to Adrian and Barkin Jack and everything he does over on his channel. Can we give just a short round of applause for Adrian and his new Omega? I want to see some claps. Roar of the Tiger says, applause. So Pigs in the Blanket says, huge fan of Adrian. Yeah, he's crushing over there as well. Congratulations on his new Omega. Very, very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, guys, I gave you a sneaky, sneaky little coupon code from now until the end of Hanukkah. If you guys want to use it at the store, check it out. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, let's get a few more uh, questions in the comment section. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> There's a mod chat. That fellow there is trying to out mod you guys. Dude, Lord Elgin, the certified T3 bot, is sowing chaos within my channel. He's trying to pit all of my different moderators against one another. Ay ay ay. <clears throat> that fellow there, certified T3 bot, Jory, uh, my wife wants to wants me to suggest a good pocket watch brand, even though it's not your jam. Okay, so thank you for acknowledging it because, wait, real quick on that note, Arc seventy three says SPBN 031 or Seiko Su Seiko Sumo. They're not comparable, okay? This, the SBBN 031 is a tuna. It's a true big tuna with the 7C46 movement. That is not comparable to a Seiko Sumo. Seiko Sumo is, is not, not even close to a tuna. Get the tuna. The, I've never even heard those two compared. The tuna is on such a higher level than the, the Sumo. It's, it's not even, yeah. Okay, so, uh, TFT, his wife wants me to suggest a pocket watch brand even though they're not my jam. So thank you for acknowledging, I don't really, I'm not really a uh, pocket watch guy, all right? If I were, I'd be talking about pocket watches on this channel. Um, I, think a, I think a lot of people assume that just because you like wrist watches, you just like pocket watches, and I, I think they're a totally different animal. There are people that are, you know, very knowledgeable about pocket watches. And I'm just not one of those people. However, Illinois would be a company that I recommend. Um, I think, oh my God, I got a solid gold pocket watch from, from my bar mitzvah. And I'm pretty sure it's in Illinois. And it's gorgeous. It's really, really nice. Um, but I don't know much about pocket watches. I got to be perfectly honest. So, yeah. So, Illinois. Check out Illinois Pocket Watches. How's the new Speedmaster video coming? 
Uh, good. It'll be out next Friday. William Russo says, hey, Jory, I'm late. What's going on, Rella? How do I feel about the Cartier Santos? The pigs in the blanket certified T3 bot. Um, gorgeous. I think it's one of the most prolific watches. Uh, like the first pilot's watch really was the Cartier Santos Dumont. Um, yeah, great watch. Big fan of, uh, and I think you're talking about the modern day Cartier Santos. I'm still a fan. Um, Kamasu or Pro Diver? Kamasu. Orient all the way. Thank you. I have a choice between a Simon, a Monster, or a Tuna. Tuna. Not even close. Reading comments, guys. Next watch I'm eyeing. Hmm. So many, guys. So many, so many, so many, so many. Uh, probably, you know, the Zin 3006 is still on my list. A Rolex Explorer 36 millimeter, because I'm kind of going back into a field watch phase. I'm just like never out of a field watch phase. I have this romantic idea in my head of wearing a Rolex Explorer 36 millimeter, like a, like a, a modern one, okay? And just wearing that all the time and still having my other watches, but just wearing an Explorer one 36 millimeter on like a distressed leather NATO and just beating it up and just wearing it and traveling with it and just destroying it. And it's like this kind of fanciful romantic idea in my head of, oh, I wore this Explorer one, not even on the bracelet and it's a Rolex, but it's rough and tumble and I can beat on it and it's been with me through thick and thin. And, and then I realize that I have so many watches that I love wearing that that would just never happen because what would happen is I would go on like a trip with that and then I would be like, okay, I got to go home and put on my reverso. So it's like, you know, it, I just, there's too many watches that I have that I love wearing that I couldn't really ever be a one watch person. It's just too difficult for me. So yeah, I'm just messed up in the head, I think. The Pigs and the Blankets certified T3Bot says, I wore 14270 for 15 years, great watch. Uh, do you have, do you have it? Can I buy it from you? The more beat up it is, the better. Uh, Robert the Tiger says, Jory, great show as usual, but I have to skip. Take care. Have a happy Hanukkah. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, Make It Tame Bleach says, could we see an updated water resistance for the new Speedmaster? Kind of a bummer. It's only 50 millimeters or 50, 50 meters. Here's the, here's the thing, man. Um, I don't think that they will do an updated water resistance for the Speedmaster. It was never supposed to be a, a wet watch, right? It's supposed to go up, fly with it, maybe race it. They've gone up in space with it. But Omega has too many other products, like their Seamaster series, to ever want to really make their uh, flagship chronograph with an updated water resistance rating. They already have the Seamaster chronographs. So it's, it's, I don't see that happening, but we will see. Just wait for my rant on Friday about that Speedmaster. And Chris, you're absolutely right. I, my Speedmaster never gone in the water, so. Um, Linus, so B, B and R or B and B bands or something. Ugh, I wish I knew the name. Um, there is, I've seen a canvas bun strap um, that you can swim with. I wish I knew the companies. I think it's like B and R straps or something. I forgot. I'm so sorry.
50 meter water resistance rating is all you need staying on the dry side of the pool. Amen. They have a baby, they have a baby G, uh, like DW5600, that's Pokemon. And I might get that. It's a Pokemon G-Shock. Mr. Bond, so you celebrating Hunukkah? Yes, I am celebrating Hunukkah. It's a very fun holiday for us Jews. Hunukkah, the festival of lights. Hunukkah. Um, any G-Shock options for someone who wears 36, 38 millimeter? Yeah, I mean, baby G's, I suppose. That's, I can't really think of anything else. Lord Elgin certified T35. Jory celebrates hun Hunuka. Z Pings in the blanket certified T35 says Hunuka rocks. Mr. Braun says, I didn't know you're Jewish. That is awesome. How, how, how did you not know? You know the you know the funny uh, Mr. Bond. We're just messing around. We're we we're a bunch of jokers. But the funny thing is, I guess you didn't know I was Jewish. But somehow all the people that hate me on the internet know it know immediately that I'm Jewish, and they tell me in the comment section. Mr. Bond says my grandma is Jewish. Well, congratulations. Pretty sure that makes you Jewish. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, bro. Uh, hey, Jory, have you considered an episode that chronicles the path, patch of a watch? I think you mean the path of a watch you procure for the shop. Um, maybe. Yeah. I don't know how to go about it. But yeah, like finding the watch and stuff, sure. Unbelievable production says, okay, Shabbat Shalom also. Good Shabbos. Can we get a review of your whoop strap? I suppose, but this isn't a wristwatch. It doesn't even, it doesn't even have a screen and it doesn't tell the time. So there's, there's no, it's not really watch related because it it's it doesn't even have like a step counter. It's it, so it's not really a watch. Shad, do you t take requests to find a watch? Yes, but you have to leave a deposit. So if you're interested in that, then that's how we get compensated for our time because we've gotten so many people just trying to um, take us through the ringer. It's just ridiculous. Still got the WRX STI? Yes. I do. Jory, if you could only have one watch, would you choose Polar Explorer 2 or Black Sub? Well, I own both of those. I own a 16570 and I own a Black Submariner um, 16800. And out of both of those, I would choose probably the Explorer because it is it has more of a complication, all right? GMT, period. Have I seen the new John Mayer G-Shock? Yeah, it looks fine, but I don't know what's very John Mayer about it. And I watched the episode where he spoke about it. And John Mayer, you know, he's very charismatic and he's very funny. But to me, it's still, it's like, okay, John Mayer took a six, DW6900 and then they chose like the color of the inking. It's just not, it, it didn't seem that John Mayer, like, I, like I, it was just blatant that Casio and Hodinkee wanted to use John Mayer to get money. That's, um, do I ship to the UK? Yes, I ship everywhere. I ship worldwide guys. I've shipped to Germany last week. I shipped to Italy. I've shipped to Switzerland, France, uh, I think to Dubai. I've shipped to Malaysia, Singapore, um, Beijing, Hong Kong. I've shipped to uh, One Watch to Japan. I've shipped to Colombia. I've shipped to Scotland. I've shipped to 
a few different places in UK actually, um, and Canada. I've shipped everywhere. So yes, we shipped to England. To Mexico, I've shipped to Colombia, and that's even further south. So yes, I shipped to Mexico as well. But I'm saying where I have shipped. Would I ship to the moon? Maybe. Dayton, Ohio, baby! Um, how is the drop, how's the 996 driving with the upgrades? <laughs> so sick, dude. So sick. Uh, I just did like a laundry list of things to the 911 and that thing is so sick. Jory doesn't ship. He gently packages your watch and then yeets it to your house. <laughs> Uh, has the Scooby gone? Uh, nope. I just added a new car to the stable. I have the 911, I have the STI, and I have my Jeep Rubicon. So, don't worry. Still have it. Because the STI is kind of, it's my daily. So. Lord Elgin, oh wait. I, I got your super chat. Lord Elgin, don't... Okay, I'll do a whoop strap review because I suppose a bunch of people are interested. So we'll talk about it. I'll do that. I'll do a whoop strap review. Maybe for the channel members. <laughs> Daniel Lee, Jory is accurate with his yeets. Yo, CE, what do you do for a living? You're here, dude. What do you mean? You're here. Link is outside. Uh, man has a nice car collection too. I'm very picky, guys. I'm very picky about everything that I buy. So, you bet my whatever car I get, you bet I've been a, I've obsessed over it before I purchased it, and whatever watch I buy, I've obsessed over it before I purchased it. Joel Taborski from Canada, uh, Canada, Kansas. Uh, I gently yeet it. Yeet! Thoughts on the John Mayer G-Shock? It looks good, but it's not really... I don't know what's so special about it. And and the video that John Mayer made to explain it, it it's like, it just looks... Like, it may as well be my Neo Tokyo. How much would it cost me to bring back the metal air guitar section in a video? <laughs> I haven't done that in a while, dude. We, we have to do that. <laughs> oh my god. Kumar from India. What's going on? Robert says, I'd like to say I'm picky with everything, but then I wouldn't be able to explain some of the women I've dated. Well, you were thinking with a different head. How picky am I about ordering meals? Well, I know what I like, so, but I'm not a picky eater. So I wouldn't say I'm, uh, like, I'm very open about trying things, and I think the fact that I, one of the good things about Los Angeles, well, this is actually a touchy subject I realize right now. One of the good things about Los Angeles was that you used to be able to go to restaurants and try a bunch of different cuisines. Unfortunately, 50% of Los Angeles is unemployed and most of the restaurants are closed and out of business now. So that's, you know, and now my channel will be demonetized for talking about that. But it is what it is. Um, but I, so I wouldn't say I'm super picky about food and I'm open to trying a bunch of different things. Linky, hold on, I'm live streaming. We're almost done. Go Navy, John. Go Navy. Next watch I'm after, I don't know, maybe a Rolex Explorer. It's 36 millimeter. Does it have to be kosher? No, I don't. Um, I don't keep kosher. I'm an observant Jew. I, I do celebrate Judaism and I, and I, 
uh, but I'm not Orthodox at all. I'm not an Orthodox Jew. Hold on, guys. Blink is complaining. Because my office door was closed and Link is here today. Link, you come here. Okay, guys. Some loser John said this is getting weird. Guess what, John? You have been banned from the channel! Woo! If you talk trash about Link, you get the boot. Link is my baby boy, and um, yeah, you're just gonna get banned. So later, John. Wouldn't wanna be ya. Uh, Tom says, you like Mogan David or Manischewitz? Uh, well, I don't drink. But just for your information, uh, Magen David just literally translates to Star of David. So that's like, that's just how you say Star of David in Hebrew. Um, the Peaks and the Blanket says, Link is dope. Um, more questions. Microbrand predictions for 2021. That's a great question. Stay tuned for an episode I'm about to make. Um, stay tuned for an episode I'm about to make about what I want to see in 2021 and what I don't want to see in 2021. Jake Corsa, you banned someone over a comment of a cat? Oh my God. You just got banned too, bro. I bet you didn't know that I also had a banned hammer. It's weird, my moderators have them, but I have the strongest one. Bye! Um, air horn. Adam H certified C3R says, I was, <laughs> he's the moderator, says, I was waiting for it. And Bryson's laughing, my other moderator. Guys, I, you just don't, why push the buttons, guys? Because if you push the buttons, you're going to make us push the buttons, and we don't want to push the buttons. But we will. Let's have some fun, yeah? Um, AJW says, what I don't want to see in 2021 is Rolex being lazy. So true. Is so true. I don't even know what's gonna happen in 2021 when it comes to watch releases. Remember when uh, Basel World said that Basel World 2020 is happening in January 2021? And I was like, that means it's Basel World 2021. And now because of COVID, I don't think anyone's really gonna have a, uh, I don't think anyone's really gonna have a, a Basel World. Um, Joel Taborski, certified T3Bot, not to bring this to a somber moment, but I would feel terrible if I didn't acknowledge this comment. Joel Taborski uh, has lost his son, unfortunately. Uh, thoughts and prayers to Joel, one of our channel members. He has been a very good viewer of mine. He um, has actually been a customer of mine. Uh, his son was unfortunately in 
California and passed away, uh, oh, um, this is very, this is very, very sorry. Um, hold on, wait. Okay, it's not his son. I'm trying to read the comment properly. Hold on. A friend of mine's son was killed out in California last week. And another friend of mine's son was killed. Whew. Okay. That's still terrible. I'm so sorry. But it's not his son. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. There was... All right. I had to kind of decipher that comment a little bit, but thank God. All right, I'm so sorry to hear that though. Um, I've known, I think it was three people here, three or four people here in just LA uh, that have passed away because of motorcycle accidents. Motorcycles are really cool, but one thing, uh, one thing that's very, crazy to think about is like when you if you tap something in your car all right um it's it is a nuisance it's frustrating like if, if you're if you back into something and you hit a, a post or something you know it's it's a little bit of a nuisance um it's frustrating you got to get the bumper fixed but if you tap something and you're in a motorcycle it's it could be life ending. So it's just very weird. We take it for granted having these big multi thousand pound vehicles around us. And uh, something that's just a little fender bender in a car is like life threatening on a motorcycle. And so in California, LA County specifically, it's just too dangerous to ride a motorcycle. They're very common here. And what makes it even worse is that you can lane split. So people lane split in California and uh, it is um, really dangerous because with all the traffic, people are always changing lanes in their cars. They're looking to change lanes and then you really have to pay attention because you might be trying to change lanes in traffic and then a motorcycle will just right through in between, like splitting the lanes. So it's kind of, people have to be more careful on both sides. You have to be more careful when you're driving, for sure. And then the motorcycles um, need to be also in, in, incredibly careful. Um, so very sorry to hear that, Joel. And uh, God bless you and God bless your, your friends who unfortunately lost their sons. That's, uh, it, it's terrible. But, um, yeah, the T3 Army, you know, is here for you. Um, do I like Zelos watches? Um, I think they make very interesting pieces. I was a little bit disappointed with the last watch I reviewed because if you guys recall, um, there was a bunch of debris under the dial, I believe. So that was kind of frustrating. Uh, the Pigs in the Blanket says that Joel needs a hug from Link. Uh, thoughts on the Save the Oceans turtle. Um, very, very cool gradient blue dial. I actually really dig it. I think it's really, really cool. Um, Lord Elgin with the super chat says, stay, stay strong, Joel. We members love you. Jory has been... Uh, Jory... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My reading... There's so many comments. It says, stay strong, Joel. We members love you. Jory has truly been someone to be grateful for in 2020, giving us a place to be together and make new friends. Well, I really appreciate that, Lord Elgin, but it's really not about me. It's about you guys. This community is all for you guys, and it wouldn't be a community without you guys. So, um, you know, let's get a round of applause for not only my members, but for all my regular viewers. Uh, Get a round of applause and you guys rock we couldn't we could not have this very very uh 
valuable community, but I don't mean valuable in a monetary sense. I mean valuable from like a mental well-being sense. I, th I think 2020 put, if there's one great thing that came of 2020, it, uh, it was the forced valuation of everything around us, right? 2020 was like a mental reset. It made us specifically step and and without our permission even. It, it made us and forced us to step back and take into account everything that we have around us, whether it be the people in our lives, you, you know, the, the, whether it be the people in our lives, our family members, our friends, our significant others, whether it be um, the, the things, the materials in our lives, as silly as it sounds, like it made us be very, very, very thankful for the ability to have food in our refrigerators, to put food on the table, to have a house over, or, or a roof, I should say, over our head, to be like, to have a new day to wake up. You know, you know what I mean? It, it, it's crazy with everything being very uncertain and, and very freaky. Um, it's, it really did put things in perspective for me, and I know a lot of you guys out there. Uh, it made me really take inventory of everything. And and if you think, if you think that I was invested in this channel before the lockdowns and quarantine, you better believe that right now I am even more fired up about this channel. I am even more fired up about this community. I am even more gung-ho about making the best content ever because I realize, holy cow, if this was important to me before this, this is like the most important thing ever right now. Am I on lockdown right now? Yeah, dude, This is, I mean, I live in Los Angeles, dude. Los Angeles is done. So, um, Chill has a very good statement. He says, uh, we forget that every new morning is a miracle and should be taken gratefully. Amen. Amen. God bless. Or in the Jewish religion, you don't have to be Jewish to say it, but we say Baruch Hashem, which means literally just thank God. So guys, with that being said, uh, Shad Kerr actually has another good statement. He says, uh, uh, someone says, happy Hanukkah. Shad Kerr says, it's easy to take life for granted. Even the simple fact that you're able to walk can be something that many others can't do. Take a moment to appreciate what you've got. Um, Bryson says, when are you moving to the Midwest? Dude, I'm practically packing my bags at this point. <laughs> um, but guys, with that being said, I'm actually going to wrap this one up. We've been here for 83 minutes. And um, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. You know how I tell you to... Get out of your comfort zone and tell someone you love them. Those are very important. But there's one more thing I want to add to that list. Okay? And it's something that I stupidly have overlooked like the entire life of the channel. I, I like haven't said this last part. And it's actually very important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it to the list. Okay? So number one, get out of your comfort zone because... Doing something that is uncertain often pays off. I was really, really nervous to, to talk to Connie for the first time. And it paid off. It worked out. Um, and number two, tell someone you love them. You know, you should, we should all take inventory of the people that we have around us. And so tell someone you love them. And you shouldn't have to go a moment without telling someone you love them while you can. So I'm going to start it off. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, you could have been anywhere uh, this Saturday, but you chose to hang out with me. So I love you. But there's a third part, okay? There's a third part uh, that I have not added. Um, and it's to tell you yourself that you love yourself. You, sh you should be very thankful for the people you have around you, but you should also be um, cognizant of how you yourself feel 
And you shouldn't take yourself for granted either. Uh, as someone that spends a lot of time doing a lot of things for a lot of businesses and work and I have my hands in a lot of different places, so to speak. If it's not the shop, then I'm doing the channel. If it's not the channel, I'm sending emails to other businesses. If it's not emails, then I'm focusing on consulting. It's, a, it, my mind is everywhere. And I'm also paying attention to, uh, you know, my interpersonal relationships, Connie, my family, my parents. I have a niece. I have a baby niece that is like my whole world. Uh, I have siblings. I have, you know, th there's a lot. And so for all of this, when you're so drained at the end of the day, you do need to take a moment and be like, okay, like, I got this. I got this. I like... I can do this. I'm thankful for the ability to handle this. And so tell someone you love, tell someone you love them, but you, at the end of the day, dude, love yourself, man. Hell yeah, you deserve it. So that's, that's what I'm gonna add to the list. Get out of your comfort zone, tell someone you love them, and love yourself, dude. You seriously earned it, especially after 2021, man. So. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, yeah, like I said, could have been anywhere today, but you chose to hang out with me. And uh, this is truly a blessed Saturday ritual of mine, hanging out with you guys. So I will see you on the Discord chat to my members. Special thanks to my channel members. Special thanks to my moderators. Special thanks to my viewers. Uh, you guys freaking rock. And uh, I will see everyone else on the Monday live stream. And remember, That coupon code will get you a discount until the end of Hanukkah. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Have a good one, guys. Love you.